This is the plaintiff, Mark Batiste. He says he bought a 2,000 sub from the defendant, and the guy sold him a piece of junk and knows it. On the way home after he bought it, he was almost killed when the car died in the middle of a snowstorm on the highway. A mechanic told him the thing was basically put together with spit and glue, was worthless, and he wants his money back. He's suing for $2,617 for the cost of the car, the tow, and the mechanic. This is the defendant, Angel Cigara. He says he bought a car from his co-defendant, fixed it up a little, and then resold it to the plaintiff. Apparently, the guy's now claiming he was sold a lemon and is trying to sue him here and now for something he had no control over. This is also the defendant, Stacy Lee McGee. She says she never met Angel, but sold him the sob for only 900 bucks because she told him it had a lot of things wrong with it. Boy, was she shocked to return from her honeymoon to learn she was being sued in court over this car she sold to Angel. They're accused of unloading a lemon. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated. Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Mark Batiste, yes. you are suing Angel Sagara in one lawsuit and Stacy McGee in your second lawsuit for $2,617 that you have spent so far on a car that you purchased and it's, you're unable to drive it because it's a lemon. Tell me what's going on. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I received a check from an insurance company um, I got rear-ended um, several months ago, so the sob I had at that point, which I used to get back and forth to work, was considered a total. So the insurance co company cut me a check, and I had to rent a car for several weeks until I could find another vehicle. Okay, so you wanted to buy another sob? Yeah, another okay. sob. So um, I bought my last sob in New Hampshire from Craigslist, and I figured that if I go to Craigslist, I can look for a car within that range of what they gave me. And you found this one. Do you still have the ad? Yes, I have the ad right here. Let me see. This is the ad I responded to. How were you able to get the ad? Did you print it out back then? Yeah. Okay. I, one of the things I'm very careful is that when I see a car I like, I print out the ad so I know exactly what is stated in the ad. And um, that's something. Wow. Yeah. Where do I get more of you? Yeah. I work at it for advertising agency, Your Honor. I'm very thorough. We have to. Oh, I've had lawyers here who didn't <laughs> print out the ad. <laughs> Runs and drives with no problem, no check engine light. Everything works great. The Saab has the snow and sports button and is a tank in the snow. Has heated leather seats in very good condition. Sunroof, rear wiper, CD player, newer Dura Last gold battery, genuine Saab weather mats. Tires have 70% of tread left. Title in hand. Come drive it away. Caller text Angel. Okay, so go ahead. I responded to that ad. Um, I, uh, that Saturday, February 22nd, I went down there by myself just to kind of give it a look-see. Um, didn't drive it, started it up. Um, then come, Why didn't you drive it? Because there was actually a vehicle blocking. It was snow on the ground, for number one. Number two is there was a vehicle blocking the entrance. So I wanted to just make sure the car was solid, the car started, there was, you know, it is what it is as far as looking at it. So, um, and I just want to kind of give a look-see. I looked at several other cars that day. Okay, so do you come back and test drive it? And Yes. Okay, um, you don't have a mechanic take a look at it though. Uh, no, I, I did not have a mechanic take a look at it that day. Um, I don't know a great deal about cars. Right, which is why I would have a mechanic take a look at any used car. Right. Before you buy it, not after you, after buy, you it. buy it. All right, so what happened? So what happened was my father and I, we test drove it. Um, we looked at it, we kicked the tires, we went to the kicked gas station. Kicked the tires? No, you know, it just, did you really we, kick the tires or are you using that? <laughs> yeah, like we a, actually did kick the tires. Kick the tires. <laughs> so so we, we looked at the car, we went through it, you know, you know, it's not our first rodeo. That's our, well it is, if you're kicking tires, that's yeah. a judge joke. That's, uh -huh. what we, that's what we judges say to each other, they no. kicked the tires, they didn't really, okay, go ahead. No, no, we, no, we looked under the hood, we, you know, we saw, we So you bought it for car. how much? Uh, $2,100 cash. Okay, and do you have a, um, a bill of sale? Yes, I do. Any paperwork? Yes. Show me what he gave you. This is the bill of sale um, that we, we agreed upon. I paid him. Now, apparently, okay, so here's a bill of sale. I, Stacy Lee Levesque, I'm sorry. Yeah, Levesque? Yeah. You're now McGill. 
Okay. But here's what I'm trying to understand. Did you ever meet Stacy? No, I've never met Stacy. If you look at the ad, Angel said he was selling it for his friend Stacy. Selling a 2000 Saab 93 Turbo for my friend who is moving. I'm still in the same spot. Okay, hold on, hold on. <laughs> we'll get to you. Those who are Angel's is moving. Words. And then you get the bill of sale and it purports to be signed by Stacy? Yes. So I, I figured that ain't Mr. Cigar was selling the car for his friend Stacy, according to the ad. Those are his words, not mine. So I kind of I said, no problem with that. I, and that's when I gave him the money for the car. That you bought as is. I bought as is, a cool, but here's the, here's the thing, Your Honor. I did some um, more research. I actually called the town of Thompson. Come to find out she's been delinquent on her tax bill for the car for the, since 2012. So the tax assessor's office- Does that sound right? Yeah, you first, you couldn't quite decide if she was gonna admit that or not. She looked over in shock and then I, I said, does that sound right? And that sounded a little soothing. So she goes, yeah. Okay. This is a copy of uh, the bill. This is from the tax assessor's office. She goes, she can't, can't sell you the car, Mr. Batiste, because she owes back taxes since 2012. And as of July 1st, she's gonna owe $90. So How much? It, well, $54 as of right now, and then- $90? Uh, yeah, so as of her email that she's from the town of Thompson right here, this is what, that she can't register a car in the state of Connecticut and she can't sell a car or can't sell that particular vehicle to you until those taxes, so. When does the 50, when, like, do you have any evidence from them about when the, the $50 or whatever, $54 or whatever it is popped up? She said is she's been delinquent since 2012 as far as back taxes on the car. So, okay, so what happens though? You buy the car and then something goes wrong, obviously I wouldn't be here. Yeah, 45 minutes after I buy the car, I'm driving home, my father's heading in front of me, I'm in the middle lane, it's, it's snowing out, it's dark at night, I don't know anyone in that area, and then the car cons out. And I thank God I ma managed to get the car over to the side of the road, which I almost got hit by 18 wheeler. Okay, because the car conked out in the middle lane and then I, I finally got over. My phone's dead, couldn't get a hold of my father, had no friends or family in that area. Come to find out, um, I called, then, you know, the state trooper actually came and I have a state trooper report right here. He called for a tow service for me and the guy said, I only take cash do you want the car towed back down to Groton or do you want it towed home? So I figured it might just be the alternator. So what I did was I had the car towed from Route 2 in Connecticut back to Summers and then I can have a mechanic look at it after that. And then that. a mechanic looked at it and told you? Uh, he told me there's a list of things. He goes, it's not worth fixing, Your Honor. He, sa um, he said that basically he, this guy sold you a lemon that he fixed the car up just enough to pass the okay, test Okay, now, just let me ask you a question. What do I do with the as-is part that you signed? Well... You bought a car as-is and you're complaining about the condition of the car. Well, no... As it turns out, there's a whole lot of things I'm about to address with that side. Right. But I just want to know, what did you learn? Because you buy it as-is, you don't have anybody look at it, it conks out on you, what right. did you learn? Well, I learned, I learned several things. First of all, you should never, if, if I known right from the start it was as is, if I saw the ad. Well, I'm sorry, honey. The thing you signed says it's as is right. in capital letters. Right. Why would you not know from the start? Because you are one of the sharpest plaintiffs I've had in here. Right. Why would I believe that you didn't read the two paragraphs that you signed? Well, you know, you know what, that, that's on me. Yeah, okay, you let that marinate there for a little while. Now okay. I want to talk to you. All right, Stacy McGee, what is going on? Um, my husband actually put up the Craigslist ad for me in Rhode Island and Connecticut. And oh, Angel so you responded. also put it on Craigslist? Yeah. Okay, do you have the, the ad? I have both the Connecticut and Rhode Island ad. Okay. I put the ad up for $900. $900? Mm hmm And stated the problems that were wrong with it. This is the <coughs> Connecticut and that's the Rhode Island. Thank you. Did you sell it to him? On January 1st. That's the guy you sold it to? Yeah. And that's the only time I ever met him. On January 1st of what year? This year, 2014. Of this year? And when did you buy it? I bought it um, February 27th, 2014. This oh is my gosh. Bill okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you sold it on January 1st and a month and a for how much? $800. $800 because it was a hunk of junk. <laughs> and then you sold it for $2,100 a month and a half later. Okay, and did you owe back taxes? I guess there's some kind of- Yeah, I did. Did you know you did? Yeah. Why don't you just pay it? Why would you? 
Procrastination. Procrastination? Okay. Start talking. <laughs> so pretty much I bought the car in January, like she said. Um, she didn't have anything to do with the sale towards Mark. I, that was clearly just me. I, well, then um, why, let's, question number one. Why did you falsely list on a Craigslist ad that you were selling the car for a friend? Because I didn't know anything about the car uh, previously to that. I just knew the problems that were, came with it when I bought it, and I knew the problems that I fixed on it. Why is that an answer to my question? <laughs> what was... You want, me to try, you want to try it again? <laughs> okay. Somebody sells you a hunk of junk for 900 bucks because it has so many problems. Then you sell it for to an two and change times that a month and a half later, and you say nothing about problems. You call it the greatest thing since sliced bread. Then you also say, I'm selling it for my friend, which is an utter absolute lie. Please defend yourself. All right, well, yeah, I made up a story to sell the car because it's a used car and pretty much I didn't know anything about it and I never registered it, so it wasn't in my name. Why didn't you just keep the car you bought from them? Well, because of the fact that my parents gave me a car. My truck was breaking down at the time. So my parents had an extra car that they loaned me and I was driving that to school. So I was looking for a car that was, you know, good on gas and stuff. So I found this car as a fixer upper. I know a little bit about cars because I work at AutoZone, so. Why did you sell it for 2100 when you bought it for nine? Because of the time and, and parts that I put into it. Okay, and what qualifies you to fix the car? Apparently the car broke down certified. on the day they drove away. So minutes. what qualifies you to fix the car? I'm not a certified mechanic. You're not a mechanic? Nope. No, you're not I even just... a mechanic, you're a salesman at AutoZone. So tell me how you justify in your moral compass buying a hunk of junk for 900, selling it for 21, and washing your hands of it and saying as is, and just... claiming that Stacy is your friend. Wait a minute. There's a bill of sale, mm -hmm. which purports to be signed by Stacy. Did you forge Stacy's name? Nope. She signed it, and I never signed my part Just of it. Just a moment, sweetheart. This bill of sale says it's for $2,100. And the seller's signature on the bottom of that up. is a false way to lure somebody into thinking Stacy signed this. Stacy, bring this to Stacy, will you? And her husband. Do you recognize that document? Everything except for the price that's in there. Is that your signature? That's my signature, yes. Yeah. The amount was filled in? I had the amount filled in. Oh, so you didn't sign it in blank. This is Listen my to my question. The amount was filled in? Yes. I don't, I don't think I filled in the amount. You don't think you filled in the amount? No. Husband, come on up. I, no. I didn't think How I'm do you know sure you filled she in did. the she amount? Was she was pretty adamant about it putting the price in there. But she's not adamant about it in her testimony now. Yeah. No, because everything else is my right. And that's even that's... in a different pen. First of all, <laughs> I, I just, I, I... Who raised you <laughs> <laughs> that you would think that you could pretend she's selling it to him and she's your friend and that she's selling it to him for 2100 when she didn't sell it to him for 2100 and that you think there's nothing wrong with that? Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So, 45 minutes after the car conks out, can the dude get his money back? No. Why? Because it's as is. Yeah, but 45 minutes, seriously. It's as and as is. You guys are hard. What do you think? No. You would not give him his 40. Is, did the guy who sold it know what was up? He didn't know, no. He bought it off him and it's, it's broke, so it's his fault. Wow. Okay, going inside the courtroom. Pretty much it was an open document. I didn't... The fact that you can take I advantage of a situation it. doesn't mean you should and that there won't be a consequence. Yeah, I didn't want her to get... I didn't want her to be involved in oh, this. Oh, well, let's see how she it. got I involved in it. So, so you sell a car, you get married, you go off on your honeymoon, and what do you come home to? A lawsuit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And then you... But you're a liar! You are a liar. You lie about whether or not a friend of yours is selling it, and you take the document that she gave. Let me see that document. Where is that document? Let me tell you what you did. You didn't fill it out. You left blank the price on the bill of sale. I think that's what you did, because I don't see any tampering in terms of the price. I don't think he whited it out and wrote it on top. Yes, it's in a different color ink, because you left it blank. That doesn't mean that you get to pretend that Stacy's selling him a car for 2100 when she's not. Mm -hmm. Where do you think this is going to go? 
Yeah, I mean, I definitely shouldn't have lied about, you know, my relationship to her. You know, she, I didn't really know her, um, but I didn't know anything about the car. How and about two things? One is your it. jumping title. You don't, you don't have the authority to sell this car because it's not registered in your name. Two, how about you're lying about the condition of the car? See, as is is as is, unless, of course, someone can prove that you're a stinking liar and you know there's a problem. What do I do with the fact that they sell it to you as basically a shell for $800 and then 40-something days later, you sell it for $2,100 and you're just a kid. You're not some mechanic who knows how to miraculously turn the car from garbage into gold. Well, pretty much they test drove the car. There was nothing wrong with the car. We took the car for a multi-mile, five miles for a test drive. I've never driven the car before that, and I never registered it before that, so it wasn't in my name. So that's the reason why I said I was selling it for a friend. Yeah. Go ahead, Stacy. Um, he came over with a tester um, because we did tell him that the engine light was on. We have texts in his phone that prove that, and he did take it down the road. He knew the engine light was So what on. do you think he did? He tinkered with it, probably turned the engine light off, sold it to this sucker? Yeah, he That's kind of what it. happened. <laughs> Just stop. I want you, I, 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 I have to end because I don't want to look at you anymore. Mm. Okay, you're going to pay him back the purchase price. You're going to pay him what he paid to tow it, and you're going to pay him what he paid a diet for a diagnostic. Yes. You need to learn a lesson. You're so organized and on top of stuff, and then you end up buying a used car, but you know, at a, because you didn't want to spend a hundred bucks on a mechanic, you bought yourself this disaster. Okay. You need to know that when you sell a car, you got to make sure that the guy who buys it from you puts it in his name. You got to follow up after you sell a car, because if he ends up killing somebody in that car, guess who else are going to sue because the car isn't taken out of your name. Okay. And you need to learn that just because you can take advantage of a situation doesn't mean you should, because that is morally corrupt and illegal. So no, you're not going to get away with it. Verdict for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,617 only against Angel Sagara. The lawsuit against her is dismissed. Well, in the words of the judge, this defendant has just been shown to be a liar in court, and uh, it's nothing that you deny. Nope. Yeah, I clearly lied about, you know, my relationship to Stacy, and she had no involvement in selling the car. And I mean, pretty much, you know, Sometimes Are you, you ashamed to, of, of, of yourself right now? Or yeah, I normally, I, I don't lie normally. I, I told the story, you know, to sell the car, and that's where and, it went wrong, I guess. How are you feeling about things right now, yourself? Well, I mean, sometimes you have to lose some to win some, so I mean. Okay. All right, right around there. All right, come on out here. and What a mess you got yourself into. What, yes, are you right. kidding? What, how did you let this happen? I have no my, idea. My fault. <laughs> your fault. <laughs> yeah. Listen to him. <laughs> oh, your fault, huh? You allowed her to sign that thing without filling it out? Uh, I thought the price got gotten filled out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. You head around this way. All right. Here comes the uh, plaintiff. Uh, yep. How are you feeling about what, the way you handled oh, yourself? I think uh, justice is, uh, has been served, and um, you know, I knew I was telling uh, the truth, and. Um, you know, I had a tight window for having a rent a car, and I, you know, and I you uh, didn't have a mechanic look at no, it. No, no, I did not. And that's your big mistake. And that was my big mistakes. But uh, I looked at several other cars that I knew were lemons right off the bat, and I said no to them. And I thought this car was solid. Harvey, I test drove it. So here's the deal: when you buy as is, the only way you can undo the deal is if you can prove fraud, which means that somebody intentionally misrepresented something important in the sale. Otherwise, you, my friends, are screwed.